So what if I told you that Mercedes engineers put a ticking time bomb in your oil pan? Check this out. All right, guys, welcome back to, I guess, chats from an E63, since that's what my last video was, too. So I got a weird one today. We're continuing the free mods thing, and this one kind of, I've been looking into it for quite a while, and uh, it's weird. So like all my videos, this is more of a DIY journal, and so everything is used at your discretion. This is just what I am looking into. Let's talk about engines for a second. Oil is undoubtedly the lifeblood of any engine. It provides so many different functions. It obviously lubes everything. It prevents metal on metal contact between your bearings. It cools the pistons. It cools a lot of the motor. It cleans the motor. It does all kinds of stuff. And at most modern cars, it executes the, you know, the functions like the variable valve timing and the, the pressure needed for the timing chain. All that kind of stuff is all done with oil. So let me ask you a question. Would you trade half of your oil pressure for a few tenths of a mile per gallon? Well, Mercedes did. So let me tell you about what's going on inside your Mercedes engine. So in the oil pump, there is a solenoid that is activated by the computer to lower your oil pressure. From It says from four bars down to two bars. And I'm not joking, this is in the documentation. It is for gas mileage. That's why they did it. Now, there's no denying that when they built these motors, they are well-engineered motors, they did a great job, but just like anything good, bean counters get involved and they try to mess with stuff and usually they mess stuff up at least they messed up at my work so I guarantee they messed it up here and so what they did is this solenoid opens up and it lowers the oil pressure anytime the rpm is less than like 3500 rpm and anytime you're in low or moderate throttle or less companies have been doing this for years so I mean in the 90s and 2000s Corvettes and Camaros had to skip shift what made you go from first to fourth gear uh, pretty much every car in the last 20 years has cylinder deactivation and ask anybody that has one and I have one it messes up the motor they don't last as long and so you're sacrificing longevity and life just for a few tenths of a mile per gallon you know it's pretty marginal at best so if you've been around these cars for a while or watching any YouTube videos, there is a ton of videos talking about the failures of the M157. Generally, they're pretty good, but every once in a while you hear about one dying. You got cylinder wall scoring and scuffing. You have melting pistons and cracking pistons. And then you have like bending rods. And a lot of people attribute this to oiling. So that makes you think, why does it happen to some cars and not others? And I think Taos' last video kind of showed it well. So this valve in here is normally open. And there's actually a spring in there so that if it fails, it should fail in the correct position to have higher oil pressure. The only problem is it doesn't always. So in Taos' latest video, he had a valve fail, which kept it on low pressure the entire time. You don't imagine what kind of damage it caused this stupid solenoid. Dang it. Why I'm angry? We lost the engine because of this solenoid valve. So what happens under low pressure? Mercedes says that it turns off the oil jets to the pistons so the pistons aren't getting any oil. And then obviously you're running a high load. I mean, these motors are six, 700 horsepower and you're doing it with low oil pressure. So that's just gonna kill your motor. And just a side note, some people might think that's only when you have like high miles on the car. And I'll tell you a little story here. My friend had a chain tensioner go bad at 2,000 miles, and it was because some debris got in there and jammed up the piston. So it can happen at any mileage on your car. So yeah, it is a little unnerving that in your engine there is essentially a Widowmaker artery that could go bad at any time. So what is the fix? What is the answer? So I approach this very cautiously and very skeptically, and I will say that this is not my mod. Some very, very smart people figured this out. And I thoroughly read everything they did, looked at all the charts. They had all kind of logging done. Basically, they plotted out how your oil pressure was with the valve working and how the oil pressure was when the valve was unplugged. Essentially, the best way to put this is it has normal oil pressure and the valve does reduction. So with the valve not working, you're getting normal oil pressure all the time. So I had a question, would it ever go higher than it's supposed to? No, it's still limited to 60 PSI. It has a pressure relief valve for that. Uh, another thing is like, what other bad things could happen? And honestly, nothing. Like I couldn't find any negatives to doing this. It's all positives. So some might ask, well, what would Mercedes say about this being done? Well, they do say something about it because when you unplug it, it throws a silent code. It won't show up on your dash or anything like that. It's just one of those informative codes. And that code literally says in their documentation that this is a fault 
of an unnecessary part and no action is necessary. They won't even cover it under warranty if it happens under warranty. It's almost like they're like, yeah, it's better off if it's unplugged. So what are the benefits to having this done? Well, in addition to getting your full oiling and the cooling jet spraying on the piston pins and pistons to cool them, the crazy thing is literally everybody that has done this says their engine runs smoother, the idle smoother, it's quieter. Remember the variable valve timing is actually actuated by oil pressure. So now that you have adequate oil pressure, it actually activates the cams a little sooner. And so everybody says that they're getting more low end power and that it feels more responsive. And here's the odd one. A lot of people even say that the transmission shifts better. And that one kind of was like, wait a second, how the heck would the transmission shift better when you're talking about oil pressure? Completely two different systems. And I do have a theory about that. So the theory I have is Mercedes knew that this was in there. It's activated by the computer. and so. So like I said, they had to program in certain parameters to make this valve open and close. And they don't want the harm on the engine too. So I bet you there is a little delay built in that when you command more throttle, it will not give you the more throttle until a certain amount of time has passed for that oil pressure to come up. So it knows a couple milliseconds go by, the valve closes, a couple milliseconds go by, the oil pressure goes up, a couple milliseconds go by, then it allows whatever throttle you command it. Because everything on here is fly by wire. So that, in theory, would explain why the transmission feels better and that it has less hesitation off the line. So anyway, after doing all this, I decided to do it. I'll show you how to, I did it here at the end. And I've been driving it this way for about two weeks now. I have nothing but good to say about it. it everything functions fine. Everything everybody said about it is true. The biggest benefit for me is since it's spraying oil on the pistons all the time, your engine warms up sooner. So I never do any kind of moderate or hard driving until my temperature gauge on the oil turns white at 170 degrees. So that takes forever when you're cruising along and the reason it takes forever is because it's, the oil is not getting sprayed to the hot parts of the motor. So when it's getting sprayed on the pistons, your oil temperature rises to a normal temperature much, much faster. So here's how to do it. You do have to do it from underneath the car. There's a little plug about at the seven o'clock position from the crank. Essentially, you just unplug it there. So you kind of need two hands to do this. So I have the camera on a tripod, but in the back of here with the pick, you can see there is a little gray clip right here. So on this clip, you're gonna have to pull back on the little gray part. Once it's pulled back, you can usually just grab your hands up there. Now with the clip undone, just pull it out. Here's a little bonus. I actually found oil inside the plug. So eventually, just like the cam solenoids, that oil may make its way up to the ECU. So by unplugging it, we essentially fix that problem. So we're going to go ahead and clean that up a little bit, and then I'm going to put a boot over that. There's a couple things you can do here. A couple of people have put dummy harnesses in there, essentially just the harness in there cut, and that way no debris gets inside the plug or anything like that. That is a good option to do. Uh, or you can just unplug it and then make sure that you have a dust boot of some form kind of protecting the open end of the plug from the elements. Then you just zip tie the plug out of the way. I actually opted for just a little bit smaller, a little red boot over the clip only and zip tied out of the way because you have belts spinning around here. thing I did to verify this just because I was skeptical and this is kind of a big deal you know messing with the oil on your car I hooked up a mechanical oil pressure gauge and just looked at my oil pressure with the valve working normally and with the valve unplugged and yeah sure enough the valve pressure is consistent all the time it's much better so again guys I approach this very cautiously and after much research and stuff like that I do think this is the way to go for my motor I do think it's gonna provide much better longevity I'm hoping that it doesn't do any of the cylinder scoring, keep my pistons well oiled, which lubricates that pin that uh, Taos always talks about. Anyway, guys, obviously do this at your discretion. Do your own research for your own car, guys. This is just what I did.